if you asked me a month ago about what I learned in this course, I probably couldn't tell you at all before I started researching for this video. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was CPEN 211. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And believe me, there's definitely a lot that I wish I knew before heading into this course. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking CPEN 211 during the 2023-2024 school year with Professor Tor Amont. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is CPEN 211 all about? In this course, you will get an introduction to digital computing systems and microcomputers, where you'll learn all about digital logic components and then progress all the way up to coding a small microprocessor that can execute an assembly language program. If all that seems a little overwhelming to you, well, that's because it probably is, and it was definitely a lot for me to process at the beginning of the course. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how CPEN 211 is structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. And sit tight because there is definitely a lot of stuff to cover about this course. Each week you will have four hours of lectures where the professor will go through the main course concepts with some theory, discussion, and some examples. Attendance is technically not mandatory for these lectures, and during our year, these lectures were live streamed and recorded for us on Panopto. Occasionally, there may be iClicker questions asked in class, but they didn't count towards anything and they were just for some in-class practice. A few notes about Tor's lectures though. He goes through his slides at a relatively fast pace. His handwriting when he's annotating his slides is not the most legible. And depending on which lecture hall you're in and where you're sitting, it may be a little difficult to hear what he's saying, if, especially if you're sitting at the back of the class. You will also have a two-hour lab session each week where you'll get your lab assignments marked by a TA, and a two-hour tutorial session every two weeks, which will either be used for a lecture, your midterm exam, or your lab proficiency test, which we will cover in just a bit when we talk about your exams. Speaking of your labs, you will have seven weekly lab assignments in this course that emphasize gaining practice with the skills that you've been taught in class. Labs 1 and 2 are done individually and have a focus on building circuits, while labs 3 to 7 may be done with a partner and have a heavy emphasis on programming. For these labs, you will work on them as homework and then go to your lab session to get them graded by a TA. In addition to the Canvas course page and a Piazza page, where weekly announcements and important course information will be posted, CPEN 211 makes use of another web page that allows you to sign up for your lab partners, look up the TA that will be marking each of your labs, download your lab proficiency tests, and submit your code for the labs for auto grading. For the programming labs in labs three to seven, you must also create a GitHub account in order to upload your code to a specific repository that will be used for your TA marking session. I know this is a lot of information just about the lab assignments, but because of the significant amount of time that it takes to complete them, it's handy to know what you're getting into. Throughout the term, you will have three lab proficiency tests, or LPTs. The LPTs test your ability to make something work in a timed environment. At the start of the LPT, you will download the test questions from the CPEN 211 course webpage, and you will submit your code via a Canvas quiz. But here's the thing about the LPTs. They are auto-graded and will often be marked as either full marks or zero marks. In other words, if your code won't compile or work with the autograder, or if there's a syntax error in your code, there's zero forgiveness. For practice, there are some past LPTs in the CPEN 211 course webpage that you can view for yourself, and even an autograder for those past LPTs so you can see if your code will work or not. Lastly, in terms of course structure, we had four flipped lectures scattered throughout the term as well. Flipped lecture preparation makes use of a site called edge.edx.org, where before a certain lecture date, you will be tasked with watching the recorded video lectures on this site and 
answering the multiple choice questions that are asked in these videos. Quick note that answering these questions do count towards a small part of your overall grade, so make sure you actually get them correct. You must answer the questions before heading into a flipped lecture, where instead of learning new content, the professor and some TAs will go through some practice problems during the lecture to help reinforce the concepts. In other words, it's kind of like the AppSci 160 learning model, where you'll learn the concepts online and then come to class to practice using them. In terms of the required materials for this course, you're going to need quite a few things in order to get all set up for CPEN 211. Starting with the physical things, you'll need to purchase the second year ELEC tools and parts kit for $190 and the DE1 SOC board for $258 US dollars, which is around $350 Canadian dollars. Actually, I think I have them right down here. Let me show you. All right, so this is the DE1 SOC board and this will be used for your lab assignments. And you can also use them for your LPTs as well if you would like to. And this is the second year ELEC tools and parts kit, which will mostly be used for labs one and two, uh, where you'll be building your circuits. And these kits are mostly used for your labs and information on where and how to order them will be released in the course syllabus. In terms of textbooks, CPEN 211 references two textbooks that aren't necessarily mandatory purchases, but are nice to haves in my opinion. The first textbook, which actually, let me get that real, real quick. The first textbook, which is heavily used in the first eight weeks of the course is Digital Design, A Systems Approach by Dali and Harding. And the second textbook is Computer Organization and Design, ARM Edition by Patterson and Hennessy. In all honesty, I probably opened this textbook a total of like three times during the course and opened the PDF version of the ARM textbook maybe twice and I still passed the course. So take that as you will. And in terms of the computer stuff, you're gonna need a decent laptop that is preferably a Windows PC. At the beginning of the course, you'll be given a handout that will brief you on how to download the model sim and Quartus programs onto your computer, which will be used for your labs and configuring your code with the DE1 SOC. Make sure you go through this tutorial as soon as you can and don't procrastinate on it like I did. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in CPEN 211. You'll first start off with the basics, learning about what digital logic is, the different types of logic gates and how they work, how to use NFET and PFET transistors to model a function, how to optimize a combinational logic function using a tool called KMAPS, and different combinational and sequential logic building blocks, such as encoders, decoders, multiplexers, latches, and flip-flops. You'll then move on to learning about how to use Verilog, which is a hardware description language that allows you to synthesize and simulate your hardware designs. You'll first cover how to use Verilog for combinational logic and then sequential logic. I would highly suggest trying to use the syntax as soon as you can by coding the samples that are shown on the lecture slides, as it will help you a lot in preparation for the labs and the midterm exam. Speaking of, your midterm exam will probably be at around this point in the course. After the midterm, you'll then learn about how to implement combinational logic circuits, which use carry in and carry out bits to follow a certain pattern adder circuits and the concept of two's complement, and a bunch of Verilog that will be useful for labs five, six, and seven, including counters, read-write memory, and data path state machines. I should also mention that after the midterm, one of your flipped lectures will be a big introduction to programming in ARM assembly, which is what you'll be focusing on for the rest of the course. And in the last bit of the course, you'll learn about timing analysis and how delays affect clock periods, how ARM assembly instructions are pipelined for execution, what happens when stalling happens and when it can happen, and how to implement the equivalent of a function call in ARM assembly. You'll then cover how to deal with numbers that are not integers using fixed point and floating point representation using the IEEE standard, which at least one of the questions on the final exam will be about. And lastly, you'll be covering ASCII values, how to represent the equivalent of arrays and pointers in C code in ARM assembly, and how to implement two-dimensional arrays in ARM assembly. I might be missing a few things here and there, but that's pretty much everything that you're gonna learn in CPEN 211. 
In terms of the grading scheme for CPEN 211, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting with your flipped lecture prep questions, these are weighted at 4% of your overall grade. And your seven lab assignments will be weighted at 2% each, totaling up to 14% of your overall grade. In terms of exams, you will have three lab proficiency tests worth 5%, totaling up to 15% of your total grade, one midterm exam worth 17%, and a final exam worth 50% of your overall grade. However, this is only half the story when it comes to your grading, as there are a bunch of requirements that you must meet in order to pass the course. First, with your lab assignments, you must get a positive score on at least six out of these seven labs in order to pass the course. In other words, you can only skip one lab assignment if you still want to pass the course. With your lab proficiency test, you must get at least three out of 15 points on it in order to pass the course. And with the final exam, you must pass the final exam in order to pass the course. The LPTs consist of two questions each, and depending on the question, there may be some marks in them. The first LPT will be based on lab 3 and will most likely consist of a finite state machine question or some sort of combinational logic module question where you'll need to code said module. The second LPT will be based on lab 4 and will most likely consist of two questions where you'll need to convert C code into ARM code. And the last LPT will be based on labs 5 and 6 and will most likely to ask you to code a data path module and its control functionality. Regarding the format for the midterm and the final exam, there will be a mix of shorter answer questions at the beginning of the exam and longer answer questions for the rest of the exam. The shorter answer questions are at a competency level. In other words, you either know it or you don't. For the longer answer questions, they can ask you to do many different things and you have to show all your work in detail. Some examples of these longer answer questions include writing out the code that implements a certain design or diagram, drawing a circuit diagram that implements a certain code sample or design, encoding ARM instructions and converting between ARM and C code, or filling out waveform and pipeline timing diagrams. Oh, and one last note, you are allowed to bring a handwritten formula sheet to these exams. For the midterm, you're allowed to bring a single-sided letter-sized formula sheet, and for the final exam, you're allowed to bring a double-sided letter-sized formula sheet. All right, now on to some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into CPEN 211. And please keep in mind that these tips are coming from someone who didn't really do the best in this course, hence the title of the video. If you're watching this video before course registration begins, this first tip will give you a lot of extra time to work on your labs, and that is to register for a lab section that is as late into the week as possible. Because you work on the labs as homework and get your labs marked during your lab session, Having a lab session later in the week, like on Thursday or Friday, just means you get more time in the week to work on your labs. Every extra hour counts when working on a CPEN 211 lab, and I definitely really regret choosing the Tuesday lab section. Regarding the labs themselves, even though they may be very annoying or time consuming to work on, Understanding the labs is actually really, really important for CPEN 211 and it has a high correlation with the grade that you'll get with this course. And let's just say that I didn't really understand the labs all too well, which meant that my final grade definitely reflected this. So learn from my experience, don't BS the labs like I did. As a side note, a bonus of having a good understanding of the labs is that it will most likely mean you will do well on your lab proficiency test as well. So there's that. Speaking of your lab proficiency test, doing the practice LPTs on the CPEN 211 course webpage was actually insanely helpful, as the questions are usually very similar each year and you can gain a lot of insight from the practice LPTs. During the LPTs, it is recommended to write test benches for your code to make sure it works, but in all honesty, most people were either too lazy to do so or there just wasn't enough time. The least that I would do before submitting your code for the LPT is to make sure it compiles in both model sim and Quartus 
so that it can actually be marked by the auto grader. Regarding advice for the exams, doing the past midterms and final exams will be your best friend, as the question types don't usually change all that much. I would actually recommend putting some of the questions and solutions from these past exams on your formula sheet, because they can definitely be a good reference during your exams. In fact, try to put as many questions and solutions as possible on your formula sheet. For context, this is what my formula sheet looked like for the final exam, and I think that it's the most that I've ever written onto an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 65% in CPEN 211, and the class average was 75%. This course is tied with one other course as my lowest grade in my university career so far, but definitely takes the title for the most that I've ever scored below a class average. But in all honesty, I probably deserve this grade based on the amount of effort I put in and how much I understood, or the lack thereof. If you asked me a month ago about what I learned in this course, I probably couldn't tell you at all before I started researching for this video. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into CPEN 211. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that the next course I'll be covering is ELEC 202. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.